Hello, welcome back to the channel. I'm Dr. Sylvia, a general practitioner and health educator with Askaway Health. Let us begin. I'm going to share my screen. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go through just a little bit of background. Three, four slides I want to share with you now. And we're going to go into a little bit of background um, about, let's see, oh, not that one. Um, about the condition and then we'll tackle the question. So that's the plan. So I'm going to be sharing my screen. Hopefully you can see. Um, hopefully you can see my slides. So we're talking about sickle cell disease and essentially it's a blood based disease. So, you know, we talk when you talk about conditions and you group them into brain problem or heart problem or nerve problem, this is a primarily blood based condition that affects the red blood cell but the complications that happen because of the damage or the disease of the red blood cell can affect different parts of the body um, in sickle cell disease or sickle cell anemia now it happens as soon as the sperm and the egg meet at fertilization so as soon as a couple get together and as soon as the sperm from the man meets with the egg from the woman and fertilize that's when the genetic material okay that's when the genetic material from both the sperm and the egg mix and create the embryo or the fetus or the baby it's at that point already that whatever is going to show as sickle cell disease hemoglobin sc hemoglobin cc hemoglobin af whatever that's when it happens that's when it starts okay so both the sperm and the egg are carrying genetic material fertilization happens each each one each one the sperm and the egg transfer genetic material into the baby and that is how the genotype of the baby is determined okay now so what exactly is going on in the red blood cell so it's a problem of a type of protein in the blood cell that's called hemoglobin hemoglobin okay hemoglobin is found in the red blood cell and we're going to just be very basic and talk very simply about this because if we start going into so much detail then we'll be here for goodness knows how long but hemoglobin gives the sort of reddish tint to the red blood cell but more importantly it is that bit that allows oxygen life-giving oxygen to be transferred in the blood cell around the body so that's why it's so critical that's why it's so important now there are different types of hemoglobin research and studies tell us there are different types of hemoglobin but again let's look at what's most common that's relevant to our discussion so hemoglobin a is most common so when people say i've got an aa genotype they've got hemoglobin a type a there is hemoglobin s so where somebody says they've got a an s genotype those are the people that have hemoglobin s and that's what leads to that's what we commonly know and leads to health issues that we're familiar with with somebody who has sickle cell anemia um, from childhood they are prone to different types of illnesses bone crisis um, anemia they might be prone to infections and so on and so forth there is hemoglobin c now that's another type of red cell disorder it's not as common as hemoglobin s but it does exist and it can um have implications so it's not as common yes and the illness it confers is not as severe but it can have serious implications and we'll look at that a little bit later in this in the stream and of course there is um, there's also hemoglobin F, which is also known as fetal hemoglobin that's a normal type of hemoglobin just as hemoglobin a is normal but it's only found in newborns up till up till around the age of six months before it starts changing to whatever the adult hemoglobin will, will become or, will, or is so from about six months and so that's why um, children may not display any illness until they're a little bit older so they wouldn't start displaying um, bone pain or experiencing anemia until after that period of time roughly around six seven months going forward because at that point the fetal hemoglobin f is becomes replaced by whatever that person's adult hemoglobin which is determined by what they've picked up from both their parents at fertilization okay so hopefully uh, let me just check that my screen share is going on well good fine so let's continue now the like i said it is the genes that you inherit that determines your hemoglobin type 
okay and i've touched on this a little bit but let me emphasize so there are different types of genes that we could end up with and um, those that copy or carry the a or s or c genes and we're inheriting them from both parents so now i want to break it down clearly so that you see how it comes across so for somebody who has hemoglobin a they have the aa genotype so they've inherited an a gene from mom and inherited an ag from dad hemoglobin a okay somebody who has the next one is hemoglobin ac they have the ac genotype they've inherited a from one parent and c from another parent so this person has hemoglobin ac i'm going to talk again about what that means having an a and a c what does that mean so just hold on to that for somebody who inherits the s gene from both parents so the mom passes on an S and the dad passes on an S, that individual has the two SS genes and has hemoglobin S. And this is individual who will have those health complications. The most common type of um, um, sickle cell disease is sickle cell anemia. And it's, it is individuals with hemoglobin SS that develop the condition. What if a parent gives an S gene um, and then the other parent gives a C gene? Then you have somebody with hemoglobin SC disease. So that's another type of um, abnormal um, hemoglobin because that hemoglobin is not going to behave like hemoglobin A. And so this person has the SC genotype because they picked up the, the genes, one S gene and one C gene from the parent. And what if somebody has an AS genotype? It means that one parent has contributed an A gene and the other parent has contributed the S gene so that in the baby, they have the AS genotype. Okay, so just to digress now, for this baby with the AS genotype, right, when they have their children, what they have to contribute are the A gene and the S gene. That's what they have to contribute. So if they have a partner who has also has the AS genotype, that partner also has the A gene and the S gene to contribute. So you now have for those cup that couple AS AS, they have these two different gene types to contribute. Either or any of those combinations could happen in any of their children. We're going to look at this in, in detail in a little bit, but I just wanted you to have it in mind that we get these genes in pairs, AS. So you could pass on the A type or you could pass on the S to your offspring. You could, um, if your partner has the same, they could pass on the A, they could pass on the S. So think about the combination. What combination happens in the child is what's going to create the genotype. So I hope that's clear because that's one of the things that people ask a lot about. What is the sex of my child or what is what um, is the first child going to be AS or SS or, you know, we're going to look at that in detail. And lastly, they were one of the examples that, but the last example I've got on the slide is if an individual um, receives a C gene from both parents. So you have one parent contributes a C gene. For example, if a parent is AC, they might contribute their C gene to that child. And if the other parent is also AC or SC or CC, they can contribute a C gene to that child. Okay. And that is how the child ends up with the CC genotype and has hemoglobin C disease. Okay. So that's how, um, that's how it could develop and i just wanted to break i just wanted to break that down i wanted to clarify um how that inheritance happens so that we understand uh, the development of different genotype pairs in individual how the inheritance happens okay so the last slide i want us to look at before oh no second to the last one i want us to look at before we look at specific questions i said before it's primarily a blood cell condition and um it affects the red blood cells the protein in the red blood cell is uh, becomes abnormal because the um there's a change the, the what happens with the hemoglobin s is proteins are formed in different chains and so one of the chains in the normal one is replaced with another type of protein and it becomes um, HBS or HBC, um, as the, the, you know, as the case may be. So, whereas the normal hemoglobin protein um, behaves in a particular way within the blood cell, the abnormal causes something different to happen in the blood cell. So, if you look at these pictures, that I'm going to use my um, the cursor to demonstrate. So, this is the normal 
red blood cell type it's got this nice circle shape and a little bit of a dip in the circle in the middle so it looks like a bit of a, a donut with a bit of a dent in there and it's the concave um, appearance of the cell this is the normal red blood cell this particular shape allows the cells to swim easily through the bloodstream don't forget they're carrying this protein which enables which allows oxygen to fit onto the protein and it's able to carry through the body so that's that explains why it's got it's got this nice sort of slim silhouette slim outline allows it to move freely through the bloodstream so this is what you have with hemoglobin a or hemoglobin f these are the kind of cells red cells that you have when it comes to the abnormal hemoglobin types for example hemoglobin s the cell shape changes and this is what the cell shape becomes and that's why it's called sickle because the cell the red blood cell changes from this nice spherical roundish soft nice slim silhouette that can it's flexible can move through the bloodstream but this now becomes a, a rigid um, sickle-like shape that can stick together easily stick together with other cells inside the blood and then and, and then make it difficult for the blood cell to flow for the blood cells to go easily through the bloodstream so that's where the problem begins that's why it causes a problem it starts to block the blood vessels and um, you don't get enough the blood these blood cells can die very easily so they can lead to anemia that's low blood levels blocks the blood blood vessels so it can cause things like crisis in the bones that's when there's lots of pain and um, the individual's immunity is low so this just the change this is what the change this is what the fact that an individual doesn't have um the um, hemoglobin a this is what it means this is the shape that the red blood cell takes and why um it goes on to cause this the condition so it's blood based affects the red blood cell but it can go on to affect different parts of the body name whichever system whichever organ the brain the eyes the kidneys the heart can all be affected by sickle cell um, disease sickle cell anemia so commonly you find people that have bone pain like i've talked about they are more at risk of infection they might develop anemia and some are more severe than others okay so for example sickle cell anemia that's caused by hemoglobin s is more common but it's also the most severe more severe than for example hemoglobin c cc disease or somebody that has a cc genotype and hemoglobin c disease can cause complications but not as severely as um, um people with the sickle cell anemia who have the ss genotype okay so i talked about a and c i've explained how an individual could develop um having an a gene and a c gene together or an a gene and an s gene together both of these are inherited from both parents because they have an a gene and because these s genes and c genes are what we know, what we refer to as recessive a person who has an ac or as genotype is known as a carrier they generally are well in themselves they don't have full-blown disease it's rare for them to be ill it's not impossible there's certain conditions where they may become ill but people who have the a who have one a with one of the other abnormal gene types like c or, or s are uh, as genotype or ac genotype those are carriers of the condition and um generally are well they don't go on to have the um, painful crises or the anemia and um, for people with AS um, genotype even have some resistance to malaria um, but in some conditions when they are stressed they could become unwell so we don't say just ignore people with AS or AC genotype because oh they're fine they could um, generally they are well but they could develop um, um, problems if they are severely or significantly stressed so um that's for people who are carrying one just one abnormal gene for those who carry two abnormal genes then there will be some degree of illness it's like a spectrum so they can go for for example most severe if they're carrying two s's two abnormal gene s's that's ss most severe they may carry sc they may have two abnormal genes that's s and c they may have cc now i know i've said it's a spectrum but even amongst individuals the degree of illness can vary but what we what the studies indicate to us is that for those with sc and cc disease they do have certain problems they're not as severe 
according to studies, not as severe as people with SS genotype, okay? So those who carry a mixture of abnormal genes tend to have different levels of illness, but usually not as severe as um, full-blown disease. Okay, and as the last slide before I go to the questions was just to really look at, uh, I've said, I think I've said most of this already, but just to narrow down on the hemoglobin S and the hemoglobin C. So hemo hemoglobin S, at the risk of repeating myself, they have two abnormal genes, two SS genes, while for people with hemoglobin C, they have two CC genes, but you can also have SC. So if somebody has, a parent has the S gene and another parent has the C gene to transfer to the child, the child could end up with SC gene, okay? The hemoglobin SS um, or hemoglobin S is most common overall. It's also most severe. But hemoglobin C is common in individuals. It's common in individuals with West African background. So it is so, it's fairly common within the West African, within West African countries. So it's not something that we can just sort of ignore. We should also be talking about and, and testing people with for people to, to to check genotypes that have C, either it's an SC or AC, because they do they do exist and they are, they are called quite commonly with individuals with West African background. So I've talked about how the abnormal hemoglobin leads to disease. So the hemoglobin, um, the abnormal hemoglobin causes the red blood cells to sickle, which makes the cells rigid and then they sort of stick together and they block the blood, blood vessels and contribute to all sorts of problems. Um, and I said, it can affect pretty much any organ that you, you, you think about. They can cause stroke, they can cause anemia, they can cause um, reduced kidney injury, reduced kidney function, lead to all sorts of different conditions but we're not really sort of talking too much about the complications at this point we're just trying to look at basic um for hemoglobin c they also affect the shape of the cells but usually it's a milder disease with less complications and some of these complications may have something to do with eye disease loss of sight bone pain and bone diseases so it's those mild that they can have serious conditions and that's why i said it's important for us to be talking about those as well okay